Although preparations for the Starship's second orbital test flight are in their final stages, regulatory approval for the launch still stands as a hurdle for SpaceX. Let's take a closer look at what's happening at Starbase right now. Super Heavy Booster 9 completed two 33-engine static fire tests last month in preparation for the orbital test flight. The first static fire of Booster 9 was cut short on August 6, when four of the booster's 33 engines shut down prematurely, prompting a test abort and the shutdown of all remaining 29 engines. After the second test on August 25, SpaceX stated that all 33 engines successfully ignited for the full test duration, although two shut down prematurely. Despite the fact that both static fires were not completely successful, SpaceX decided that the tests were sufficient to proceed with a launch attempt. Booster 9's partner, Starship 25, which has been at the Rocket Garden for the past few weeks undergoing heat tile installation and other final pre-launch preparations, was rolled out to the launch site on Tuesday, September 5th. Several hours later, the launch tower arms lifted the ship, perfectly aligned it with the hot staging ring, and carefully lowered it to complete the full stack. With the added hot stage ring, the Starship full stack now measures nearly 121 meters in height. Venting was observed from the bottom of Booster 9 an hour after the full stack, indicating some sort of purge test. A ship quick disconnect fit check was then performed, which has been moved higher on the tower recently to account for the added height of the hot staging ring. A full stack wet dress rehearsal is still pending before the launch attempt, however, according to CEO Elon Musk, Starship is ready to launch, and SpaceX is awaiting license approval from the Federal Aviation Administration. So, it appears that SpaceX intends to carry out the launch attempt without a wet dress rehearsal. But to obtain a launch license, SpaceX has to overcome several technical and regulatory hurdles. The first Starship launch in April saw the rocket fly for more than three minutes until it purposely exploded in mid-air after losing several engines and failing to reach space. The launch also caused severe damage to the ground infrastructure, left a crater in the ground, threw concrete pieces into tanks and other surrounding equipment, and impacted sensitive habitat that is home to several endangered species of wildlife. On Friday, the Federal Aviation Administration announced that they have completed the Starship mishap investigation and stated that SpaceX is not yet cleared for another Starship test flight. According to the FAA, they will not authorize another Starship launch until SpaceX implements 63 corrective actions identified during the mishap investigation to prevent mishap reoccurrence. Corrective actions include redesigns of vehicle hardware and launch pad, incorporation of additional reviews in the design process, additional analysis and testing of safety-critical systems and components, and the application of additional change control practices. The FAA added that SpaceX must implement all corrective actions mentioned and apply for and receive a license modification from the FAA prior to the next Starship launch. An hour after the release of the FAA statement, SpaceX updated their website, listing some of the corrective actions they have already implemented. According to SpaceX, propellant leaks at the aft end of Super Heavy Booster 7 was the cause of the loss of connection with the vehicle's primary flight computer during the April 20 launch. This led to a loss of communication with the majority of booster engines and ultimately control of the vehicle. The company has implemented leak mitigations and improved testing on both engine and booster hardware to prevent such incidents during future missions. They have also fixed the issue with the rocket's flight termination system, which took longer than expected to destroy the rocket after the test flight on April 20 went off course. SpaceX has conducted at least one test of a new self-destruct system, but it's unclear whether the FAA is pleased with how well it works. SpaceX also made several upgrades to the orbital launch mount and pad, including significant reinforcements to the pad foundation and the installation and testing of the water deluge system to prevent launch pad damage during future launches. However, even with the new deluge system, the launch pad incurred minor damages after the Booster 9 static fire tests on August 6 and 25. SpaceX has fixed those damages with high-strength Fondag concrete, but the fact that the booster engines were not operated at their full capacity during the static fire tests raises concerns over how the launch pad will hold up during an actual launch. Apart from these, SpaceX has implemented more than a thousand other changes to the Starship, including a full suite of system performance upgrades, such as the hot stage separation system and a new electronic thrust vector control system for Super Heavy Raptor engines. Authorities have recently withdrawn the posted navigation warning notice that covered the Gulf of Mexico from September 8 to September 13, signaling the launch has been officially postponed. It's nearly impossible to guess the new launch date until it becomes known if SpaceX has satisfied the FAA with the corrective measures it has already implemented or if additional adjustments are necessary.
On Thursday morning, teams disconnected the three large water tanks from the water deluge system for some unknown reason. A new manifold for the water deluge system was delivered to the launch site several hours later. The deluge system must be completely operational for the Starship to launch, so let's hope the repair doesn't take too long. SpaceX transported Starship 26 from the build site to the launch site on Thursday, September 7. After arriving at the launch site, Ship 26 was gently lifted and placed on suborbital launch pad B. Ship 26 has already completed two cryogenic proof tests and has all six Raptor engines installed and ready for static fire testing. The static fire tests could happen as soon as next week. As you may have noticed, Ship 26 differs significantly from earlier Starship prototypes in a number of ways. Please check out my previous video to find out what those design modifications are and why SpaceX implemented those changes on Ship 26. Link in the description. SpaceX is currently building four stands for super heavy boosters at the production site. The two white stands are for Raptor engine installation, and the platform that can be seen right next to the stands in this image provided by RGV Aerial Photography is designed to lift the engines under the booster placed atop the stands. One of the stands was moved into the Megabay lately, where Booster 10 awaits its engines. According to Zach Golden of CSI Starbase, two of the remaining booster stands are most likely designed for static fire tests. They are basically mini versions of the orbital launch mount, with booster hold down clamps and 20 Raptor quick disconnect mechanisms, although they cannot support orbital launches. As launches will become much more frequent in the future, the launch mount will always be busy preparing for the launches. In that case, the new stands will offer a new location exclusively for pre-launch tests. Moreover, the launch mount and the water deluge system are designed for launching full-stack vehicles and are limited to short-duration booster static fire tests with thrust values of around 50%. The new test stands could be capable of long-duration static fire tests if SpaceX builds deluge systems of greater capacity or flame trenches at the test site. It's currently unclear where the new booster test stands will be installed. Wherever it is, SpaceX must set up water deluge systems or flame trenches, as well as propellant storage tanks at that new location. As it will take a lot of time, we will have to wait several months to witness booster testing on the new stands. The Starship human landing system nose cone prototype is being painted white at the production site. This is actually the nose cone from the abandoned Starship prototype, Ship 21. The original NASA Starship human landing system will be almost completely white, but the reason for painting the nose cone prototype white is unknown. NASA recently made public some documents containing a rough timeline of future Starship milestones. As per the documents, the first Starship launch with payload is targeted for the first quarter of 2024 and successful Starship recovery for the third quarter. Starship on-orbit propellant storage preliminary design review in 2025 and Starship on-orbit satellite servicing, recovery, and docking concept review in 2026. 2027 is the year for the crew Starship ascent, entry, and landing concept review. A Starship Low Earth Orbit Crewed Space Station preliminary design review is targeted for 2028. It has to be noted that all of these are possible plans rather than what necessarily will happen. However, it can give some hints about what could be coming up. Now, let's discuss some of the biggest updates in the world of science and technology from the past week. Japan launched a lunar lander and a powerful X-ray space telescope into space this past week. A Japanese H-2A rocket carrying the Slim Moon Lander and the CRISM Space Telescope lifted off from Tanegashima Space Center on Thursday, September 7. Less than an hour after liftoff, both the spacecraft were successfully deployed one after the other. The mission's primary payload, the X-ray Imaging and Spectroscopy Mission, pronounced as CRISM, is a collaboration between NASA and the Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency, with assistance from the European Space Agency. X-rays are generated by objects like exploding stars, black holes, radio galaxies, pulsars, and other high-energy phenomena. CRISM's science objective is to observe and study those X-ray sources, helping scientists better understand the evolution of the universe. The CRISM spacecraft weighs 2,300 kilograms and is 8 meters long and 3 meters in diameter. In addition, the two solar panels will extend 9 meters from tip to tip. To accomplish its objectives, the Space Observatory is equipped with two instruments attached to a dedicated X-ray mirror assembly. The Resolve Spectrometer is designed to make highly detailed measurements of X-ray emitting objects' temperature and composition. It can also make detailed Doppler measurements to determine how objects in the universe move. The x X-ray Imager is a camera instrument designed to capture X-ray images of the cosmos. 
The X-ray mirror assembly is a telescope that focuses X-rays from a celestial object to obtain an image. CRISM is equipped with two identical X-ray mirror assemblies, one for Resolve and one for x The mission's secondary payload, SLIM, short for Smart Lander for Investigating Moon, is a lightweight 700 kg lunar lander developed by JAXA to demonstrate precision lunar landing technologies. The spacecraft will follow a slow fuel-efficient trajectory that will take it to the moon in around four months. Once SLIM reaches lunar orbit, it will spend around a month there before attempting a landing on moon's Mare Nectaris, on the slopes of the Scioli crater. The spacecraft is equipped with two main engines capable of producing 500 newtons of thrust, along with 12 thrusters, capable of producing around 20 newtons of thrust for landing maneuvers. During its descent to the moon, the spacecraft will snap images of the lunar surface with the onboard cameras and compare them with the lunar surface map stored in the onboard computer to identify its exact landing location. A major objective of SLIM is to demonstrate a precision landing within 100 meters of its target. This capability, if achieved, would enable future landers to land on the landing site with much more accuracy than today. Just before landing, SLIM will release two small probes called the Lunar Excursion Vehicles. This pair will record the condition of the landing site and perform an engineering demonstration of autonomous exploration across the surface. If the SLIM mission is successful, Japan will become the fifth country to successfully soft land on the moon. India launched its first space-based solar observatory mission, Aditya L1, from Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sriharikota, atop a PSLV rocket on Saturday, September 2. The rocket's upper stage deployed the spacecraft into low Earth orbit as planned about 63 minutes after liftoff. If all goes according to plan, in the next four months, the 1,480-kg solar observatory will gradually break free of Earth's gravitational pull and make its way to Earth's Sun Lagrange Point 1, a gravitationally stable spot about 1.5 million kilometers away. Once at L1, the spacecraft will use its seven science instruments to track solar activities continuously, without any occultation or eclipse. The Aditya L1 spacecraft is expected to operate for at least five years. Please check out my previous video to learn more about the Aditya L1 mission in detail, link in the description. India's Chandrayaan 3's Vikram lander and the Pragyan rover have been exploring the moon's south polar region and conducting in situ experiments since the successful landing on August 23. ISRO scientists have received various measurements, including a temperature profile of the top 10 centimeters of the lunar surface, chemical analysis of the lunar regolith, and measurements of the tenuous plasma above the lunar surface. After completing their primary mission goals of demonstrating a safe soft landing, roving on the lunar surface, and conducting in situ scientific experiments, the rover and lander entered sleep mode last week in preparation for the two-week lunar night that began on September 5. The 26-kilogram Pragyan rover was turned off on September 2 after 10 days of surface activities. The rover accumulated a drive distance of 101.4 meters before it went offline. Vikram's payloads were turned off on September 3rd, but a day before that, on September 2nd, the lander performed a surprise maneuver by conducting a hop experiment and successfully soft landing again on the lunar surface. On command, the lander fired its engines, elevated itself by about 40 centimeters as expected, and landed safely at a distance of 30 to 40 centimeters away. According to ISRO, the successful hop experiment could have a significant bearing on future missions that are launched with the objective of bringing back samples from the moon, as well as upcoming manned lunar expeditions. ISRO said it hopes that the lander and the rover can be powered back on in late September, after the two-week lunar night, although neither of them is equipped with systems to keep them warm in lunar temperatures that could drop as low as minus 190 degrees Celsius. NASA's Ingenuity helicopter has reached a significant milestone by accumulating more than 100 minutes of flight time on Mars. NASA's Perseverance rover and the Ingenuity helicopter landed together inside the Jezero crater in February 2021. The rover is hunting for signs of past Mars life and collecting samples for future return to Earth. Ingenuity is aiding those quests by doing scouting work for the Perseverance team. The 1.8 kilograms helicopter completed its 57th flight on September 3, covering a distance of 217 meters in a flight that lasted 129 seconds. According to the mission's flight log, Ingenuity's total airtime on Mars has reached 102.4 minutes with this latest flight. NASA had initially designed Ingenuity to fly for a maximum duration of 90 seconds, covering distances of nearly 300 meters at a time, while maintaining an altitude of about 3 to 4.5 meters from the Martian surface. Since its first flight in April 2021, the tiny helicopter has covered 13.1 kilometers and reached altitudes as high as 18 meters. 
This remarkable achievement showcases Ingenuity's immense capabilities and demonstrates aerial exploration is possible on Mars despite its thin atmosphere. It also opens new possibilities for the exploration of the planet and the potential use of aerial vehicles in future scientific endeavors. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.